But um, if you just bow your head in your seat. Father God, I want to thank you for this moment. Thank you for this, this moment that you give us to come before you and worship you. Thank you for waking us up this morning, giving us the activities of our limbs. Thank you for your healing and thank you for your all your many blessings that you have uh, given us, Lord. Pray that you would word my mouth and give me what to say to your people. Anoint me for the service, dear God. Hallelujah for, oh, thank you. And as your word go forward, Lord, we invite you to come in this house. This is your house, Lord. Saturate us with your presence. Let us feel your anointing, your touch, in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to uh, be brief. And um, I got a word from the Lord. And I'm going to try to shorten it up. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the first, uh, the book of Exodus, the 31st. Thirty-first chapter. No, the thirty-second chapter. In verse one. And don't close your Bible because we're going to go to another scripture. And it reads, thirty-second chapter, very first. And it reads. And when the people saw Moses, they saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. Okay. The people gathered themselves unto him. Unto Aaron, and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which we shall go which shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man that brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. Uh -huh. Let's go to another scripture. Um, Exodus, the 34th chapter, in the 29th verse. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in, in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. I'm going to stop right there. Yeah. I'm not going to be before you long as I go pray for you. The other day, you know, I do a little Uber because I just got tired of truck driving, so I retired, you know, some way. And um, I had a lady in my car. Well, I went to pick up this this older lady, and um, she was going to some type of um, dialysis or some type of clinic. And, but I parked on the wrong side. I parked on the wrong side of the street. And so, uh, I was kind of confused because the GPS, you know, sometimes could be confusing. And I saw her, um, she started cursing me and started cursing and using these F words and all these words because I was on the wrong side of the street. Mm -hmm. But now when I pulled up on the right side, I told her, I said, I don't have a problem, I'm gonna have to cancel this ride. And she humbled herself because she didn't want to miss her appointment. And so when she got in the car, she started talking to me. Um, she, she just switched on. And she started talking to me about the Bible. She was very knowledgeable of the word. But in my spirit, I couldn't accept what she was saying because I, I just you know, heard what she was saying previously. 
I couldn't, you know, Sister Lisa had was saying that I can't, uh, you say you said to Lisa? Yeah. I can't hear what you're saying because I'm so busy seeing what you're doing. Yeah. Her ministry wasn't effective to me because of the word that was coming out of her mouth. Yeah. And, and so, tell you that, to tell you this, I had another uh, situation. I picked up the lady and she was, uh, she was, she was dressed, I mean dressed sharp. Dressed sharp, I mean she was sharp. And I'm talking about with the boots that come almost past the knees and the cowboy hat. And I was bringing her to a club. She was uh, jewelry all over the place. About five, six rings on her finger. And uh, I said, what's going on? She said, um, oh, we, oh the, t tonight is Tap Out Tuesday. <laughs> she said, tonight is Tap Out Tuesday. And I said, uh, what do that mean? I said, well, you pay one price and you drink <laughs> to your tap out. <laughs> and it reminded me of when I was a, a young man, uh, you know, I had a drug problem, y'all, uh, and I had a drinking problem. Okay. I used to go sit on the levee by myself. I never did like hanging with crowds. Sit on the levee by myself. And just drank till I couldn't drink no more. Wow. And I used to drink till I couldn't see no more. Oh, till my wow. eyes were getting closed. Wow. And smoke at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I was out there in the world and I had an addiction wow. that I, I couldn't uh, seem to shake. But I began to pray. And I began to talk to God about my situation. Okay. And, and, and one day, uh, I, I, I decided to quit smoking weed. Mm -hmm. And quit being right. fat, like I like. And I, and I, I, I yielded because I picked him up. I smelled him and he smelled good. <laughs> but then I got home to my grandmother, though. The spirit of the Lord had convicted me. And he said, you know, if you ask me to help, you know you ask me to help, right? And God, but by the time the Spirit of the Lord finished talking to me, I threw him in the, in the, in the toilet and he flushed the toilet. It was hard. You know, because I envisioned myself getting high. Not in the presence of church folk. You know, not realizing that the eyes of the Lord is in every place. Yes. Beholding both the evil and the good. Now I want to give y'all my, my sermon title for this morning. I'm not going to be long, Pastor, because I'm almost finished. <laughs> My sermon title this morning is Tap Out with Jesus. Okay. Yes, yes. Tap Out with Jesus. The word tap out, and you know, I, 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 I looked up the word tap out, and it means to, uh, to, to become empty. Yeah. To drink the last drink. Oh. To, to <laughs> yes. You know, to, to, to become empty. To, to full, you know, and empty at the same time. To, to, you know, and, and so and when, I, when, I, when I think about that, I think about what Moses, you know, the scripture where Moses came down from the mountain. The Bible said that he had, uh, his face was shining. His face was shining to the point where the uh, people were afraid to, uh, to talk to Moses, to, co to contact with Moses, have contact with Moses. That he had an anointing because he had spent time in the presence of God. He had an anointing that was visible. And I had wondered why, you know, uh, one morning I woke up and, and, I, and I always feel for my wife when I wake up. And she was gone. And I wondered where my wife at. And, and I found her in the closet praying. And so most mornings, you know, when I wake up, I tap to see if she's there. But I know where to find my wife. Because she was a praying woman, and, I, and one day we had a conversation, and I was wondering, I was telling her that, you know, why this bother you, and it don't bother me. Uh -huh. You know, certain things that would make me become in, fall into depression wouldn't bother my wife, because, right. and then I, read them, I, re, I began to realize, because she had a, a consistent prayer life. Amen. You know, God will give you, if you spend time with God, he will give you an anointing. For, 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 for battle. He'll give you anointing and, and fill you with a spirit. To, uh, woo. 
The Bible said that in his presence is the fullness of joy. Wonder why she was she could smile and we both were going through the same thing and I was mad. Because she spent time in the in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. She was spending more, she was out preaching the preach. She was out praying to preach. Yeah, she walked through the room uh, speaking in tongues. And going up there the noisy things. And I'm looking at YouTube, you know, <laughs> videos, and, 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 and God showed me why she was so uh, comfortable during the storm that we were facing in our life. Amen. You got to spend time right. in, the in the presence of God. Amen. You got to learn how to, God don't, he's not looking for a minute, man. He's looking for somebody who's going to spend some quality time in his presence. God wants a relationship, not religion. Let me tell you a story that I never told I never told y'all. During Katrina, sent my wife and my family to Houston. I decided to stay. But I thought I was gonna stay with some friends. We were in the night war. Playing dominoes that I like. I said, I'm gonna be with them, I'm gonna be alright. But while we were playing dominoes and the storm was approaching. The Spirit of God told me, get up, Mark, and go home. I didn't want to go, but I heard the Spirit say, get up and go home. So I left to go home and be by myself. And, and, and Katrina passed. A few months later, I saw my friend that said, you know, we had to be rescued nah. off the roof of that house. Nah. Off the roof of that house. He said it had sharks in the wall. I don't know how true it is, but that's what he told me. Yeah. And, and you know, the children of God, they were, you know, as long as uh, Moses wasn't there, they decided they were gonna do whatever they wanted to do. And live any kind of way. You can't live raggedy and expect to receive the blessings of God. You can't live any kind of way and expect God to uh, uh, answer your prayers. Uh, I, I'm kind of full. <laughs> kind of full, y'all. See, God de desires a relationship with us. You know, but there can't be no relationship if, without no communication. A relationship ain't gonna last if there's no communication. See, see, God, I know for a fact that in religion, you know, you worship idol God that can't that have eyes and can't see. God made with hands that, do, that have feet and cannot walk, and that have a mouth and cannot talk. But in relationship, he, I can tell you for myself that he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I'm his own. He talks back to you. He warns you in dreams and visions, in relationship. I'd trade uh, religion for relationship if I was you. Nothing yeah. like having the, the presence of God. I, I, I'm going to make it short because uh, <laughs> hallelujah, I wanted, you got it. I wanted to, to, to really get into this, but uh, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you guys, man. I was up all night in the presence of God. And the, and the devil tried to stop me from getting here this moment. I walked outside, I had a flat tire on the front. Oh my and, and like six, seven in the morning, I'm changing the flat. And um, the devil didn't want me to be here. <laughs> but uh, I want to tell you this here. I want to tell you this here, because I told you I wasn't going to be long. <laughs> I wasn't going to be long. But I want to tell you this here, y'all. Back in the days, back in the days, I, I used to love cartoons. Sometimes I used to shoot hooky just to watch the cartoons. <laughs> watch the cartoon and smoke my little weed. You know, and I would enjoy it. I mean, every cartoon. There was one particular cartoon that, that I liked more than the other. 
and it was a cartoon called Underdog. <laughs> Underdog had a, a girlfriend named Sweet Potter. And, and, and every time, she, it seemed like she was always getting in trouble. She was always getting in trouble. And when she would call out for Underdog, she would sound something like this. She'd say, oh, where, oh, where have my Underdog gone? she said, oh, where, oh, where have my Underdog gone? And somehow, no matter where he was, Underdog would hear Sweet Polly crying out. And uh, so he would run to a, a place uh, like a telephone booth. And in that telephone booth, he would receive power. Somehow he'd come out and he could fly all of a sudden. And, and so, just like underdog, I want to let you know that I found a place that I can go and receive power. The Bible said that in the secret, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Almighty shall. Dwelling in a secret place. Yes. You gotta learn to spend time with God. Yes. Get in the place where God can use you. Get, let him fill you with something. Yes. We want the blessings yes. of God. You remember when Moses had died? You remember when Moses had died and Joshua being under the tutelage of Moses, uh, uh, God spoke to him and he had took, took the ring. But he had a bunch of uh, young people who had uh, who had never had hadn't had experiences that the older ones the older ones had died in the wilderness because they God caused them to walk forty years, you know, in in circles just walk forty years because they had disobeyed God. And so when they got to a place um, uh, uh, called Gilgal, God told them to circumcise, told Joshua to circumcise these people. Not the, the, the young people that had been born in the wilderness. The other ones had died off. Those who were not circumcised. God commanded him to circumcise them. He circumcised them. And, and that circumcision, you know, it was like a trimming away of the flesh. You know, trimming away uh, literally means like what he's saying is uh, he's trimming away the part. That, that, that dirt can hide in him. And, and the part that diseases, that prone to diseases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was trimming away the part. He said, um, before we cross over into uh, Jericho, we're going to stop here in Gilgal. And we're going to deal with your flesh. Before we receive the promises of God, we're going to deal with, the, with your flesh, the, with the, those wandering eyes. We're going to Deal with the uh, the lascivious spirit, the yeah. covetousness. We're going to yeah. deal with that lying and cursing tongue. Yeah. Before we cross over yeah. into the promise yeah. and into the promise of God. Yeah. Amen. We always want things from God, but there's a repentance. Yeah. And there's a way that we have to walk. Yeah. you got to walk circumspectively. You yeah. can't walk yeah. any kind of way yeah. and expect yeah. God to Amen. bless us. Y'all right. yeah. yeah. told me y'all probably been to some of these institutions where, you know, where they say all you have to do is believe it and receive it. And call it and hold it. And admit it and get it. And stab it and grab it. And if I say if you don't cut it, you can't have it. Amen. Tap out with Jesus. Amen.